He is known in Mexico as the generous bandit, the angel of the poor, the narco saint, and the king of Sinaloa, though the existence of Jesus Melverde is not historically verified. However, his image has resonated throughout Mexico. For thousands of Mexicans, Malverde captivates the spirit of the Robin Hood type figure who stole from the rich and gave to the poor. In recent years, his image has been used by narco traffickers to bless and protect them from their enemies. More on that later, but first, more on the story of Jesus Malverde, the narco saint. Mariano Pérez decía, nos The story of Malverde is shrouded in mystery and folklore said he was born sometime in the year the 20th of December 1870 in a small town of Culiacan, the capital of the great city of Sinaloa on the Pacific coast of Mexico. Malverde became an orphan, left without parents, Malverde was stuck in poverty. The country at the time was going through a, a profound change. This era is referred to as the Porfiriato era due to the dictator of Porfiriato Diaz whose regime was so immense and the change that it brought to Mexico's economies through its oil production and its natural resources uh, of gold, copper and silver and its railway system. However, the only folks that benefited from these changes were the, the rich aristocrat of Mexico and many of the ordinary Mexicans were left in a slave-like slave -like state. Jesus Malverde saw the justice, the injustice that was going through his people and felt that it was his duty and his duty to essentially take what was rightfully belonging to the people and slowly but surely his reputations spread throughout Sinaloa. His generosity led him to become a hero among the poor until his death at the hands of the authority. There are numerous accounts as to how he died. Some states that he was hanged by the orders of the governor of the, the town. Others accounts include a shootout with the police. Whatever the case was, his reputation and his legacy left him in the state of sort of a sainthood as a Robin Hood type figure. But how did this man become a symbol of narco saint? Understandably, Malverde is not recognized by the Catholic Church. As the official saint, Pope Francis went as far as discouraging those that viewed Malverde as a saint. However, not even the Pope can discourage the power that Malverde has on thousands of Mexicans for those that cross the US border in search of a better life often would visit the shrine, depicting Malverde as a way to protect them while crossing the border illegally. La mujer se sorprendió al ver el carretonero Aquí no damos limolna As we discussed, many narco traffickers attempt to resemble Mel Verde and try to imitate his image in giving away to the poor, from Pablo Escobar in Colombia to El Chapo in Mexico. The building of houses, hospitals and giving away gifts to people has given the narcos a support network from the poor to the elites in the government. The failures of the authorities to provide basic rights for a citizen has created a vacuum in which the cartels have taken advantage of. 
Furthermore, the lack of trust and failure of the government has made the cartels even stronger. Over the years, the government's corruption has led to a complete breakdown of the society and the state itself to such an extent where violence between various cartels left Juarez as one of the most violent cities in the world. Next to El Paso, the safest city in America, uh, Juarez lies next to on the border with Mexico and a lot of the drugs that go in and out through uh, Juarez ends up in the United States. Now in addition, there has been a number of cases that have both shocked the world and Mexico itself. For example, the police involvement in the case of the missing 48 students who were handed over to the cartels and were later killed. This high profile case is still ongoing after similar cases against the state has made the people weary and angry at the same time and, and have lost hope in the authorities all in itself. Now, in recent news, El Chapo has made it clear that corruption is worse than Americans' public think. This has further damaged the reputation of uh, the Mexican state. Now, cases against high-ranking officials have also added fuel to the flame. Now, for example, if the state is unwilling to protect the citizens' rights, then this often creates a vacuum in which criminal entities steps in and takes advantage of. For example, we can make the similar comparisons to the... Uh, prohibition era where the state was unwilling to participate in what the consumers wanted which was alcohol and in stepped in individuals like Al Capone and Alan Rothstein and Lucky Luciano and provided the service that the people wanted and provided the the product that the people and the, cons the American consumers wanted which was alcohol so same thing applies with drugs you know the biggest consumer is the Americans who and uh, the war on drugs some have argued that has failed and has caused more death and more misery than has benefited. So, like I said, I, I don't know too much about the war on drugs in itself, but you know what I can see is the bodies that it's left behind. I and mean, that's all I can look at and that's all that I can assess. Well, whatever the case may be, you know, Jesus Malverde has brought much uh, responsibility, you know, directly or indirectly, you know, he's somewhat of a byproduct of all, all of this. In conclusion, Melvedi might come across as being unusual for the outside, for those outside Mexico, considering the religious emphasis that's placed in a person that may never have even existed. Regardless of the symbolism it creates for the poor of the society that uses the image of Melvedi as to bring uh, some form of hope in their lives. As we mentioned, the obsession with their death in Mexico uh, can be better understood now as death is simply the norm, especially in the violence that is occurring. Se sorprendió al ver el carre 